I want to make this absolutely clear. Crystal, crystal clear. VAR is shit. Palace won, Arsenal won. What the hell is going on? I like... How? How? Like, I cannot be believe what I've just seen. I the game has been over for the past half an hour. I have watched highlights. I have rewind my TV back to incidents. And I'm telling you one thing right now. And I'm like, if you haven't watched the game, just Abamyang. I'm sure he's still trending on Twitter. Abamyang makes a foul on Max Meyer. Fine, it's a foul. And you know what? He does deserve a card. But a red card? Jeez. What the hell is going on? Like, ha I get it. It's a foul. It's, it's above the ball. He gets it by the ankle. But no. There has to be an element of intent. Like, look at the force that he goes through with the foul. Look at the Crystal Palace bench. No one from the Crystal Palace bench gets up to argue to the ref. You know why? Because they knew it was a foul, but no one ever believed that that was a red cardable offense. Crazy. I cannot believe what I've just seen. VAR has screwed Arsenal to an extent. And here's why. Even though we got a draw out of this game, even though we played well for the first half, the fact of the matter is that Arsenal didn't do enough to win this game. We didn't. I predicted in this game 2-0, and there's a reason for that. I thought we had enough, and looking at some of the stats, I've got them right here. Looking at some of the stats, let me just pull these up. Like, we definitely should have won this game. Let's look at possession. 58% possession by Arsenal. 58%. Seven attempts, four shots on target. You know what that is? Four shots? Like, when you... Like, to everybody here, I, I, I imagine there's a lot of people on here that play FIFA. Like, when you look at after you play a game, you get 58% possession. You have made seven shots. Um, Just over half of them have been on target in Arsenal with four. And you only get one goal? That is Arsenal's problem. We did all the right things, except we just weren't clinical enough. And yes, there was a chance at the end for Pepe when he was all out there on the left and took a shot. And you know what? I've said it before for the past couple of months. Maybe we need to have play Pepe more on the left because he's far too one-footed for me to be on the right. Four shots on target and only one goal. Not good enough. It's not good enough. And all of this even more exacerbated by the referee in so many just bullshit calls. Just, ah, oh, so many times where we deserve fouls and free kicks in this game where we just didn't get any. And I know there's going to be some Crystal Palace fans saying, no, no, look, look at the game, but shut up. I don't want to hear it. Too many times in this game, Arsenal should have been in a position for free kicks. I will say this though, and I will commend the Crystal Palace players for defending solidly by really focusing on the basics in terms of defending. The two banks of four, I thought they were brilliant at. They stifled Arsenal all game. And the stats don't lie. When it comes to tackles and interceptions throughout the whole game, like the top three players are all Crystal Palace players. McCarthy, 10 tackles and interceptions. Mick Arthur, eight. And Kuyate, five. Like, when it comes to the defence and the midfield in terms of defensive ability, 
Palace boss the game. Like, you cannot argue with that. I, you know, like, I believe in stats and they bossed that game in terms of that. The stats don't lie and it, it shows that. Chances created. Now, I know the Mesut Ozil fanboys are going to get on me with this and even though, yes, Palace don't create a lot of chances and we only had, out of the three players that created chances, only one of them were an Arsenal player and his name was Alex Lacazette. And he created two chances out of the game. And when you look at it like that, and look at the fact that only two chances were created in the game, Lacazette was pivotal for Arsenal being where they was. And I commend him. He got an assist in this game for the Aubameyang goal in the first half, which I thought was really, really good. The one-touch football. Really liked that. First 35 minutes was brilliant. We kind of dipped down a bit, which is understandable. You get tired legs. But in the second half, we just didn't do more. And I know, like, to people who don't like ranting, I cannot help it. This is just part of me being an Arsenal fan, me being a football fan. And I just need to let it out, express myself. So apologies to anybody that doesn't like the ranting. But I, I I genuinely thought we was winning this game. On my Twitter feed, at half time I said 1-0 to the Arsenal. Okay, like we're one goal away from my 2-0 prediction. And then job done. I'd have gone on, got my lunch, feet up, no problem. But I cannot believe we didn't win this game. Even after Palace scored. Like... We, we still had chances there. But once Aubameyang got sent off, the game completely changed. Like, after then, you really was not sure what to do. And you know what? Like, I, I'm just so disappointed. I, I, I really am. I haven't been disappointed like this in, in months. And it says something that over the past several months, we've played badly we've got we've had really bad games I've come on here and been almost borderline depressed watching Arsenal uh but in th this is the first game probably this season that I I've literally been angry uh, and just frustrated I, uh, with this game like we should have won this like we really should have uh and uh, this isn't a Mikel Arteta thing. I, you can't even blame the manager or coach or whatever job title that he, he's on now. And, I, and I'm not particularly sure if we could blame the players. This just comes down to just bad refereeing decisions. And I know Peter Walton was in the VAR room and he talked about VAR and, and, and all the why it worked today. But I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Like... Goals, like, it, there's other factors that need to be incorporated. And intention is one of them. It wasn't like Aubameyang was even off the ground. That's, that's what make that's what, oh, it really kills it. Like, it was such a harsh red card. Like, when situations like this happen, this is when people start saying they believe that there's match fixing involved. Because I cannot believe red card, no. Yellow card, Yes. Yes, yes, yes all day long. Yes. I agree with that. Yellow card. But a red card? Harsh. Harsh. I, I cannot believe what I've just seen. But other things to note. Um, let's see. Passes. Here, here's a positive. Passes. Passing was great. David Luiz, Socrates and Torreira. They were the three best passes throughout the whole game. The top three players, David Luiz with 73 passes, Socrates with 63, and Torreira with 45. So almost like that triangle within the two centre-backs and the DM, that works well. So that's a positive to take from this game. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? What else have we got? Touches, again, top three Arsenal players. David Luiz, again, Maitland Niles and Socrates. David Luiz with 101 touches. Maitland Niles with 91. Socrates with 80. 
really good from them. And I know David Luiz was part of the reason why it was a goal. Uh, but, I mean, what is he to do? Like, it's a deflected shot um, but from from an IU shot. But no way you can blame David Luiz in this. He, he was one up... He, looking at the stats, he's probably our best player uh, on, on the pitch uh, today. But I got to give it to Aubameyang because he kept us in the game, scored us the goal, got us the draw. Because if it wasn't for him, again, we would have lost this game. I mean, I always say, Aubameyang, Aubameyang, where will we be without our Aubameyang? Because we would be somewhere in the relegation zone. But yeah, it's it's a tough one to take. If you're an Arsenal fan and you haven't watched the game, go out and watch it. See for yourself. I am thoroughly disappointed. Um, I obviously, like every Arsenal fan, I want to win every single game. I know that logically that's not possible. But we should have done better. You know, besides from looking at the VAR clusterfuck, the Aubameyang sending off, which for me shouldn't have been... We should do more. It is a work in progress. And it will take time. And I just need to accept that. Uh, and I hope that there will be lots of other Arsenal fans that kind of accept that as well. And yeah, it'll be off to the next one. But guys, thanks for watching the video. And again... Apologies for the rant if you don't like rants, but I, I couldn't help it. I've been holding this in for the past half an hour whilst doing this video. So if you agree with me or if you disagree with me or if you want to criticize the video and talk about how you don't want to hear my rant anymore, just leave a comment below. All of it helps. I do like to get discussions going and I do like to hear people's opinions. Uh, so a lot of times I think that a lot of them are fair. Uh, and sometimes the comments are so good that it you know, even starts to get me to rethink how I think um, in terms of games. So leave your comments below. Like uh, if you like it. Um, dislike. If you dislike it, then I want to know why. Why would you dislike this video? Uh, and yeah, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you all next time. Peace.